Welcome everyone to Top 5 Guns. It's an exciting new show we're going to be doing here where we bring on a guest and we talk to them about the five guns they would take. They had to have five guns to last for the rest of their life. The rules of the game are simple. It's the five guns from your current collection, not hypotheticals, five things that you already own. That means resupply ammo. You've got to make interesting considerations here. Along the way, we will ask them some questions, get to know them, and I think you guys will have a lot of fun with this. Well, my friend, we're back in action. The I dynamic am. duo is back. It's been a long time. It has. And I miss your odd and nonsensical questions, I've got to be honest. Thank you. I have some prepared for you. I have no doubt. This show will be a combination of hard-hitting journalism, which I like to think I'm a hard-hitting journalist. Well, because you are. Thank you. And some not hard-hitting journalism. It will be a combination of the two. Because you're fun. I'm a fun guy. I'm a fun guy, you know? The ladies, the ladies don't seem to agree with that, but I like to think that I am. And then I'm along in the, the way, same boat. Yeah, well, yeah. but you're married. You are a DILF, and congratulations on that. Oh, well, thank you very much. You are welcome. And I'm not coming on. for a while. Not no, coming on to you. you are. I mean, it's totally okay. No, which is just a kind of a congratulatory statement. Um, so we're going to be talking about top five guns and um, mixed with journalism. So let's get started with this. Who are you? My name is Mike Pappas, and I am with Dead Air. With Dead Air? Yeah, yeah, I am. Okay, cool. I mean, not this second, but no, no, hopefully no, no. No. Monday morning. Yeah, you're Papa Dead Air for, for all I do my best. Purposes. Yeah, you, you, you do your best. Let's get going with this. What is the first gun you ever bought and why? Okay, I've got it. Sorry, I had to go way back. I know, I know. I grew up in Heber. I worked when I was 12 years old. I started washing dishes in the in that summer at the homestead in Midway. I wanted to buy a 1911, but my father, he thought of himself as a gun guy, but not very good at it. Sorry, Dad. You suck at guns. I wanted to buy this 1911, and it was, you know, I had the money, right? Because I was like a kid. I made like $2.90 an hour, and I'd save yeah. this money. And yeah, yeah. He made me buy, which was actually awesome, and I had a riot with it, a stainless steel Ruger Super Black Hawk, six and three quarter inch, 357 mag, which I rolled a lot of 38 specials out of, you know? I bet. High school kid. Yep. But I shot the tar out of that thing, and I'm like, I've got a Magnum revolver, and I'm 12 years old. That's a big revolver. I was doing good. Yeah. Really? That is actually an interesting first gun to buy. That's the first one I bought. Yeah, because you think 22 for. and you, you know, you, you think you start with something like that. To go full size 357 mag is yeah. gangster I was move. just into the, I just wanted to, you know, the biggest one I could get. Yeah. Big thanks to Park City Gun Club for hosting us here. They've been a great host today, so that's where we are today. And then another thanks to Segura Gear for sponsoring the video and the channel. They make all the belts that we wear. And just so you know, we wore their belts before they sponsored the channel because we really like their stuff. They've got the emissary belt. Um, I wear the light inner belt. That's my EDC belt. They also make the battle wagon. They've got a 2.0 version of that coming out now with night vision treatment and all that kind of stuff. But there's a code 1911 syndicate. It saves you 10% off that whole uh, store. We will link a couple of the reviews that we've done below so you guys can check that out. With that said, on with the video. Gun five. Gun number five. This is, if I've already checked boxes one, two, three, and four, this is the fifth thing that I can take and you have chosen. And I think an important one out of the five, obviously. Okay. Shadow Systems MR920. Why? It's Glock 19 sized. Sure. Holsters, magazines, ammunition, and support. What's the support? The support is I have a very good supply of Glock parts mm. that I keep on hand. And Summit County Sheriff's right over here have them. Everyone has them. Okay. You can take that all the way apart super easy. If it has any trouble, get it running again. So why that, why, why that over a Glock? The Shadow Systems dude is super cool. Yeah. 
He is. Okay. Great guy. We just did and a Shadow hooked, Systems video. Ours was fine, you know. He hooked me up with that, and I've kept it as a trunk gun. Yeah. So I have it kind of handy all the time, and I shoot it. I've not shot it a ton. I'm not like a big handgun shooter. Well, no. The, the but, evidence by which is it still has the sticker on the rear of the gun. It's been shot quite a bit. I haven't like solvent tanked it or anything. Yeah, no, I mean. I mean, if the sticker comes off, whatever. You're not gonna fight it if it comes off, but you would never take it off on your own. I just haven't bothered, like I say. You, you know, when we're out and about that. and we're like needing a nine millimeter pistol, as we do, you know, work-wise, I'm always throwing that shadow system in. And it's been amazing. Like it, I don't know that it's ever malfunction and yeah. I fed it a bunch of ammo. Well, I think you need ammo. a pistol that you can sneak around with. You do? You got a sneak? Concealed. Yep. Carry. Mm -hmm. I was thinking Glock 17. It's kind that of was big. kind of my, little well, bulky. it's a little bigger, but then it wouldn't take Glock 19 mags. So I thought Glock 19. You can run the 17s or the 19s. Yeah, I don't actually have a 19. But that shadow systems is wow. Okay, so that might be why you didn't pick a 19. You don't even have an. I can't believe Mike Pappas does not have well, a Glock have, 19. I'm like all about the 20. Yeah. And the 17. Okay. The you know 19, what I mean? Yeah. Not your. Not a your 40. Jam. You know, I'm a 10 millimeter auto fan, so I tend to do a little bit more of that. And I, like okay. everyone, you have several 17s, but I thought that would just be a little bit. Hey, it, just a little more refined. It's your pick. It's your pick. I'm just here to judge it and and chime in on it. That, that's my only role here. I just don't want to hear the words that I'm wrong. Okay, because that's going to make me angry. Okay. All right, let's continue. You have a, uh, a decent gun collection, but let's just play the hypothetical game a little bit. Gun laws don't exist, and you can own any gun from any era. What would be your unicorn gun? that like, if only, if only I could own that gun? Okay, that's a great question. I'd like to start off by saying this. I'm not sure that there's a gun that I'm prohibited from mm -hmm. legally. Sure. That's on my list. Sure. Like, I don't think like that. Yeah. You know, I only think, look, if I could, I guess the one gun that I would get, if I could, would be, and it could go either way. Either of these is totally fine. Correct answer. Okay. A nuke-powered submarine, fully crewed, it with is. all the food, and, but I'd add liquor to mine. Thank you very much. Yeah. Or a nuke-powered aircraft carrier with all the little jets okay. and whatnots, and a captain that I could tell what to do. Sure. That'd like a full squad me. of people. Okay, so an aircraft carrier or submarine pow powered See, with nukes. See, think about that. I know the regular guy out there is like, oh, I'd get like a howitzer or whatever, but hey, if you had, say I had a aircraft carrier and I invited you to sail around with me for a couple of days. Oh, I'll be there. And we were just like sitting on the deck. Having a whiskey. I'm like, and don't fire up any choppers. Yeah. Or what have you. Or launch a nuke. Because we don't want to be bugged for a minute. Yeah. And maybe we just want to fish off. I don't know. We get to do what we wanted. Snorkel. Do you consider that a gun? It is has, my big boat a gun? It's got guns. It's got guns. It's hard to obtain. and It will be hard for any future guest to trump that answer. Right. Because you got nukes now. Um, sure. Everyone would have to listen to me for once. Yeah, literally. Finally. Yeah, literally. Mrs. Pappas, she ain't going to, she can't dispute Well, no, she say. wouldn't listen to me. Yeah. She would. She would have the launch code. She'd call my bluff and yeah. I'd probably get reprimanded a little bit when I told her what I had. Yeah. I think she could get into it though. Yeah, well, you're the most powerful, man, most powerful man in the world at that point, so. I would be, wouldn't I? Yes. I would like to shoot skeet, even though I'm not much of a shotgun guy, but just to do it, I'd like to shoot skeet out of the back like they did on the love boat. Mm-hmm. I mm -hmm. think that'd be fun. Yep. Okay, solid. Um, how about this one? I bet, you've, I bet you haven't thought about this one in a while. If you were not a part of the gun industry, right? Current career aside, what would Mike Pappas be doing? Well... I, I think I know, by the way. I think I know, but I'm you curious. You probably what, do know. I think I don't. I've always envisioned myself at the Home Depot. Yes! And the reason I say I knew, that is... But lumber was my guess. You were going to want to work with some sort of lumber. Which Home Depot, lumber section. And hardware. And tools. Yep. Yep. 
and electrical. Yep. You know, that seems okay. The service that I've had at the Home Depot has been so poor that I have a mental map of everything in the store. Mm -hmm. I don't need to be trained. Mm -hmm. Just let me strap on the orange apron and go help people. Hello, my name is Mike. How may I help you find your... I just mill around the store trying to find people that were as hard as this is going to be to believe when I say it in a worse situation in the Home Depot than I myself am. Yeah. And I would help those people. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm in on that. I am in on and that. And I get that sweet retirement. Oh yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Okay. With that said, let's go to gun number four. Gun number four, I don't even know what it is. That would be a tough guess. I will explain to you what it is. Norinco imported a thing called the Norinco Hunter, which is loosely based on a Galil, but it's factory chambering is 760 by 39. Okay. You call Carlos at CW Gunworks in Florida, mm -hmm. Miami and you tell him that you want one and he specializes, like his signature move is to obtain a Norinco Hunter and a Galil kit. And then he re-welds the back of the Galil receiver on. So this has got some IDF markings on it. Mm -hmm. So that has been grafted on. He does a little conversion to the front of it so it takes straight Galil parts, and that is how you get a Galil ARM in 762 by 39, Jeez. which is a fantastic rifle to fire. It's heavy, it's super smooth. This one has a K&S gas piston in it, uh -huh -huh. and obviously Wolverine. So why, why the Wolverine? Why is that your pick? The Wolverine can go on general speak for the most part. I mean, there's some outliers out there. Direct fit onto communist based firearms, com block, mm -hmm. AK style things. Mm -hmm. It can also take one and three eighths mounts. You can also take any, so any one and three eighths mount from any silencer company and along with any kind of direct thread insert, it's very versatile across the board. Yep, yep. And it sounds very acceptable on Magnum rifles mm -hmm. and crinks. Yeah. And everything in between. So if you have enough adapters, you can just put that on anything. Yeah, just about anything. I mean, it's the easiest can to alter house on. Yeah. That's why I use it on this. Well, also a caliber readily available, generally speaking. I for sure needed to pick, my heart longed for a 74 or even a 5.56 AK. As you know, That's I'm what I thought you were, yeah, I, I thought, yeah. But it's not as supportable for magazines as an AK mm. magazine. And as an ammunition that's normally bought, you know, larger, quantity as a normal amount of ammo. 762 by 39, 762 NATO, 54R, 9mm. There's a lot of things that fit in that 556. Five, People have 762 by 39 ammo. So I thought if in your little end of the world scenario, if I had to scrounge for AK mags and ammo, and this takes AK trigger components and like mm -hmm. the extractor. So fairly readily available. Yep. There's a good chance it won't ever need anything. Yeah. And there's a good chance I could keep it fed for a very long time. Okay, and fair. I wanted to add a small degree of elegance and interest. Plus it has an 18 inch barrel, which is two inches longer than the other AKs that I passed over. Mm. Okay. You know, a little bit of extra speed, like 
totally into it. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. It's a it, it's an interesting pick. One that I you know wasn't on my horizon. An after, AK. I knew you would do some sort of an AK after your little world ended, and we could sit around, and then we could still talk guns and yeah. play with some interesting yeah guns and entertain ourselves. Right on. Right on. Okay, well, allow me to tell the people at home how they can support the channel if, if they would like to. We do two, two, two kind of ways. We've got a real estate business. People still, they've heard this shit for three years. They still are tuning me out saying that the 1911 Syndicate is a real estate company that works like all over the country. I don't know how they don't hear the, the message. They've heard it for three years. I'm listening. That's what we do. So you can hit us up, 1911syndicate.com if you need help on that. Or we have our Patreon. That's basically where people just give us money. Um, they just throw money. It's like tipping a stripper, you know? They, it, But we do a little dance. Um, so that you, you just give us money on Patreon. We'll link that below. And you get some behind the scenes stuff. I'm not saying it's sexy content, but I'm also not saying that it's Fair. not not sexy content. You know You're what I'm, getting something for your money. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so uh, uh, next thing. So. Uh, Dead Air, in, in, in my mind, went from regionally very popular, right, in, in like this part of the country, to now uh, nationally very popular, right? So, okay. I like to think so, and I like yes. to tell you I'm super thankful for that. I, I, I bet. So, where do we go from here? What's next? Not necessarily what product's releasing. That's, that's you know. I like think, in my mind, I would like to continue on the same path. Up until the Glock, and I've just used them for an ex as an example, Glock did handguns, whether you think they did them well or whatever your opinion is on that, they just did handguns. Yep. And now they've got a AR-15, I hear, I haven't seen one. But <laughs> at any rate, I would like to stay kind of in that area rather than branch out. I yeah. mean, it's a passion business, right? Sure. It's not a try to find the most trendy thing and make the most of them. Yeah. Fidget spinners and f medical knockoff face masks come to mind and hand sanitizer. You know, I get that more power to someone to make money, but I don't see how you could be passionate and enjoy doing that. Um, well, not for me. Um, and you guys opened the uh, the, the the facility in locally Hebrew. here in, in Utah. Yes. Yeah, which is cool. Oh, dude, it's been amazing. We, it's really going to help us to fine tune that little lemonade. Yeah. Stand of a business that we run. Yeah. Yeah. Excited about that. Well, yeah, because I mean the Camus uh, location was not a giant building. Um, when yeah. there was two of us in the. Camus building. Yeah, it was, a little it tight. was actually awesome. Yeah, three yeah. was totally workable. Yeah, and from three to what we get up to in there, like five. It's getting a little tight. It got rough. Yeah, getting rough. a little tight. Getting a little tight. But yeah, the, we the, need to increase our capability as well. You know. Yeah. As ever expanding, I think you, any kind of business that you have, you kind of change with the times. And I'd use the example. American Telephone and Telegraph, they changed with the times. Yeah. Instead of Pony Express type telegraphs, they're in cell phones now. Yep. I, I mean, it. you gotta be a little flexible. You do, adapt with the times. Okay, moving on to gun number three. Number three. Three, caveat to three. Mm -hmm. Three probably works like one, but in the order of ease of replacement, I think it has to be three. Okay. Yeah, this is, well, you know, let's, let, let's, let's talk. What do we got? We have a, it's a kit build. It's on a Sons of Liberty lower. Mm -hmm. It's got a, FN cold hammer forged tough barrel one and seven that new barrel still mm. great barrel it's uh f marked obviously front sight post it's got the forgive me the brand it's like the knights but it's not the knights brand it's the other brand um bcd rear oh, okay yeah, yeah yeah 
and this ACOG, this is the Marine ACOG that's calibrated to 855 on a 20 inch rifle. Oh, so this is really like a matching set, if you will. I like tried made, to, made to go together. Yeah, I. when you come over to the office, I've got a little set of these hanging on the wall. Mm -hmm. But in the butt stock, it has hammer and trigger spring, extractor mm. ejector, a small tool of crazy glue. Okay. To use as if, have you ever used that as a broken case extractor? If you no. break the case, the head comes off your rifle case, your bottleneck rifle case, and it's stuck in there. Mm -hmm. You pick up a spent case. Oh, I get what you're saying. Crazy glue on it, drop it in there, slam the bolt, give it 20, 30 seconds, and if that doesn't pull it out, if it pulls off the rim of the extractor, mm -hmm. then you get the sectional cleaning rod, assemble it and beat that out of there and then you move on. So that crazy glue will work in any caliber okay. of bottleneck cartridge. Okay. So Clever. I think that's important and obviously cleaning stuff and a front side adjusting tool, Magpul grip mm -hmm. with the oil bottle insert filled with oil and a generic military sling. Yeah. I, it, 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 and you know, I think the overall length is something that a lot of people, I think a lot of people would be like, oh, you didn't do like a, you know, <coughs> 10, 5, 11, 5. You, you, you didn't even do 16. You went full center. You're going to hate me for the length. And I get that. Like you can leave all the comments you want. We're not, I mean, the question wasn't sexiest guns on Instagram no. to me. I would pick that a hundred fold over a 16 inch. That's a carbine. Yeah. That's a rifle. It has a 12 inch gas tube. It's super smooth. Yes. The buffer and buffer spring give more to reliability than people understand. Once you go to a collapsible butt stock, you give up and you start tapping your gas into where it's more spiky and it's just this is very very reliable and what's what it was smooth. made to be you know no, I mean, it's, it's the if you wanted to shoot it longer term i i think it's a better setup plus it has full velocity i don't want to sacrifice a, a, a minor amount of velocity to 16. And I certainly don't want to back down to six or 10 or 11, which I... You would hate my gun collection so much. You, I You have, would hate everything about it. I've got an absurd amount of SBRs. It's not that I don't think SBRs are sexy. I think they're cool. This Just is top in this five case, guns for the rest of your life. You got to get through the rest of your life. Certainly not going to be an SBR, brother. I'm I trying to... Yeah. Look, it's fair. I want to use it, not. Well, and you got to be, be able to use sexy. it for the rest of your life, right? So there, yeah. there's, yeah, there, there's, you know, okay. Well, okay, that's number three. All right, moving on. So this section, um, this section I call death, okay? Um, and it's just a couple uh, basic things. So this is how I get to know people. It's one of my favorite questions to ask people. So here's the scenario. You're on death row. You've been caught for your crimes, right? Which is launching a nuke. You launch the nuke, right? From the aircraft carrier, they've caught you because um, oh. you launched your Real only Real Nuremberg type yeah, action yeah, yeah. here. So huh? you launched your only nuke, so now you have no defenses. So they've caught you for your crimes. You're on death row. But they're like, hey, Mr. Pappas, the, the, the one saving grace here is that before we execute you, you get one last meal, your death row meal. Within that, you get an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert. But they can be anything from anywhere so if you're like man this one time i was in new york and i had this one pizza and it was the best thing i've ever had you can have that so with that appetizer entree dessert i'm sorry but i'm just gonna give you an honest answer please do i'm not much of a food guy like i like to eat when i'm hungry yeah i would really care less what my last meal was you don't even care you can just, if you want to feed me, like feed me. I just assume be fed. Like, I'll give you an example. I haven't yet eaten today. Okay. And I, that machine, there's a the piece of snack shit. machine. It yeah. just ripped me off for, I tried to buy a $3 item. It gave me 50 cents. So it got 250 from me. I saw it. I saw it. I'll, 
I'll get to that, but I'm very much so not picky and I have grown to detest very elegant meals and I find myself enduring them more and more. From my hatred of very elegant meals yeah. in the loud, busy, pretentious restaurants, you could chicken sandwich with me from, you wouldn't even have to have a guard go get it. You could have one of those people that drive around in a car and bring it. Mm -hmm. Uber Eats. Yeah. So Let's like a Chick-fil-A sandwich would be fun. I would even go Burger King or it could be McDonald's. Okay. I, or a burger. You pick. Okay. Just get what's... Something can Get a number one. Let's <laughs> okay. do this. Like, I'm not going to digest it. Oh, it's, you know, it's good. You're going to be dead in an hour. You I'm know. saying, I don't see a lot of okay. sense in that. That will be the most uneventful death row meal No, I ever. know. It's pathetic. I'm very basic. Well, he's a simple man. So, uh, last question on death. Who's more likely to go to hell, me or Chris? Well, I would like to say Chris, but I think you, myself, and everyone else, it would be you. Why? I just don't think you're as good a person. I'm not. No, and I mean, it comes over in the, the way that you interact with people. It's pretty apparent. It's yeah. painfully apparent. Yeah. yeah, so I can't really dispute that. All right, so moving on, uh, gun number two. Number two, I see you went small. I did. I I like a compact, lightweight package. Yeah, like a CCW gun, basically. Easy to maneuver. Yep. So, explain. Why did I do this? Yes. I believe a... What long, is it, first of all? It's a Barrett MRAD. Right now, this minute, it's in WinMag, mm -hmm. which would be the caliber that I would likely use it the most in it is the most resupplyable caliber okay in this region it is not uncommon for people to have 300 wind mag hunting rifles sure i would like to utilize that ammunition and help somebody out if they needed some because i also have some yeah 338 lapua and 33 xc not as supportable mm -hmm. but those would be some other barrels that could be put in it yeah from me okay but i think that's the i think that's the clear winner there yeah so you're going a distance play moderate range yeah well i mean um it's not short range not not too short no but you could kill anything in north america with it sure hunting yep you know yeah Fun maybe to shoot, maybe to overkill shoot. for like a squirrel but I would be opposed to yeah, if you want to blow finding that mechanical offset on that little dude. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he'd explode pretty quick. Um, what uh, scope do we have on that? That's a uh, night force. Yeah. What I'm if, a, what's the range on it? Was it like it's five, a five and a half, 22? Yeah. Mm. I'm, a, I'm kind of a fan of, and this will be not popular at all, and it's totally okay. You can comment and. Yeah, Tell be, me yeah, how you can be stupid mad. this is. I like a second focal plane scope. Okay. I like the crosshairs to stay very wiry and target-esque. I don't like a big, busy... I think that's NPR2. I don't like it super busy. I and I'm a dialer. I'm more apt to reach up and move for elevation or wind than I am to do holds. It's just the way that I work. Sure. So I don't like the target obscuration that can come from the heavier reticle. Just me. I'm actually with you on that one. I range with a range finder. Yeah. I mean, that's calibrated on 22 to, I can range with it, but I don't. I and, like to use the rangefinder. And Wolverine also. 
Wolverine. I get, we're seeing the versatility. It's not bad on that. It, sh it actually shocked us in there because I was like, man, even suppressed, this is going to suck. And I was like, oh, like that's that's pretty mild. Yeah. For a wind it's, mag. I mean, it's comfortable. On. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to take my ears off in there, but like. Well, it's tight. That's a very, very oh, it's small. It's a 10 yard space. range. Like very a, small. It's the size of a bedroom. Low ceiling and narrow. Yeah. But that does sound pretty shockingly yeah. good, actually. You get the feel that if we went outside, you'd be like, no problem, shoot yeah, away. Yeah, you'd be okay. All day. You'd be okay. Well, um, that is a, um, that's a bold number two. So, okay, let's see, moving on. Uh, this next section, the final section, really, I call the future, okay? First question is, fast forward the clock, 20 years from now. Oh, Mike Pappas has won the Nobel Prize. What would you have won the Nobel Prize for? At the risk of sounding like a common beauty pageant winner, I think it'd be peace for mankind. Yes. I mean, that's just a gut instinct I have. Now, the, I'm easy to get along with. I'm now, thinking that's where it would go. Does the nuclear powered aircraft carrier that you own contradict that at all? Well, look, I'm not saying it has to make sense. You're offering me a Nobel Prize. I'm taking the Peace Prize. Consider this. I'm taking it and I'm leaving with it. And you're what? not doing anything about it. I'm going to switcheroo on you. Okay. What if you used the aircraft carrier with the nuke for world peace? Hence the prize. I like the idea, but I don't know that... I could actually work all that out in my mind. It seems too complicated. I just want to have some margaritas on the deck of it because we're on an aircraft carrier. I'm in. I'd have the captain just turn circles or whatever you wanted. Yeah, just go on a big... Steer over there a little bit yeah. and then back over here. Go on a big lake or something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to have fun. Yeah, I, I got you. Well, and then the final question, this will be a continual one that we ask because we actually try to impart some value on, on this show, which is as a gun community, how do we be good stewards for the gun community and bring new people into it? How do we expand? How do, how do we grow the community? I don't think that if you're really trying to figure that out, I think you probably are missing the boat. If you're generally nice and enjoy gun conversation, it would be hard to not be lured in a little bit by that. You know, when I hear someone that's very passionate, mm -hmm. it's hard to resist that. It can be a little infectious. Yeah. So for me, I think the best thing you can do is just really to put it in the shortest words possible. If you want people to come into the gun space, don't be a dick. Yes. I, I mean, I think that's the plainest way to say it. I think it, it is. I, I, th I think you're actually spot on with that because I think we do a pretty bad job of that often as a community. Oh, I know we do. It's just like, hey, maybe don't anger her people that have an interest in joining the team, or at least they're expressing interest in what we do. Yeah, maybe, maybe don't be an asshole to them. With that said, I guess we will go to gun number freaking one. Gun number one. I feel like people are going to be like, this is, because this is, if I could only take one gun. That's mine. A 50. That's mine. A 50 is your number one gun. 100% always has been. And I've said this for years, and my reasoning is this. It has fairly plentiful ammunition and an extremely wide array of ammunition. Okay. I'm very 50 friendly. I do a lot of 50 loading and I'm very easily able to support 50. Okay. They have 50 in here. Okay. I'll bet they don't have wind mag because it's hard to come by and I hear that people are looking for it because it's popular, but they'd have 50 here. Okay. So 
less competition for the supply. Well, yeah. If I think of it like this, if you were in, and I'm playing on your, this is end of the world. Hey, I no yeah. resupply. True. If you found someone and you had an AR-15, yes, or whatever your firearm of choice is, yep, and you and I were palling around, you'd be like, that guy is important to me. And you wouldn't ask me to run into a confined space. No, you can't. And you would want to keep me happy and healthy and fed and, you know, yeah, taken care of because, like, I'm bringing something to this party yeah. that you don't have and can't bring. It's true. So... It's true. That's kind of my... My thinking is it's more of a way to be useful to my fellow man. Mm. And I was servant, if you will, useful to anyone that I ran into. I'd be like, bro, like, check this out. Like, yeah, if you need this kind of action. Yeah. Like if we got trouble a mile away, I'm hungry. I'm your guy. Yeah. Make me a sandwich. Sure. I'll point this thing for you. Sure. Yeah, so it's that's a bold my pick. It's a bold pick. But I'm, I've had this rifle for a very long time. That is barrel number three in it. I've worn two barrels out on it. Yes, yeah, so you're not a slouch. It's on accurized. Yeah. It uh, there's a linear bearing in there. There's no play in the barrel. Mm. That rifle shoot, you know, a minute on hand loads, very comfortably. Done it many a time. Very consistent. Once in a blue moon. It'll throw you a little sub MOA action, but mostly it's in the mid one MOA range. Yeah. 18 taggable animals. That's my main hunting rig. That is a riot to hunt big game with. Yeah, I bet. Deer, elk. Is there anything left um, of the deer? Oh yeah. Do we get to eat the deer? Or is the deer just... This is something that no, I would like to take a second to explain this. I hunted one day with a friend of mine in Wyoming, antelope. And this rifle shot two antelope that day. Jesus. The other guy, my friend's brother-in-law shot an antelope. I got out of the truck and he's like, dude, like, really? And I'm like, what are you shooting? He's like, 300 Ultra. And I'm like, let's shoot some antelope and yours is gonna do way more damage than mine will. He was like, no, and I was like, yeah, 2650 feet per second, exit velocity out of the muzzle of that. Understand it's, you know, 750, but that ultra is screaming out of there at like 3300. He caught an antelope kind of semi long ways at about 80 yards and like pretty much ruined the whole thing. I bet. That will, look, if it catches bone, I'm not going to tell you there's going to be a lot of shoulder left on the other side, but it doesn't pop them like those really high velocity cartridges do at short range. But down range energy, that's got more energy at a thousand yards than a 460 Weatherby has off the muzzle. Like that will get some work done at range. Mm -hmm. So big fan been great i've never really ruined much of any meat i mean i've had some odd shots over the years it's it has shot a lot of animals and the really good clean shots have been just a good like baseball that's size. kind of amazing that's Pull kind of amazing back but it's let me put it to you this way if a subaru forester hit a deer yeah it's got like a billion foot pounds of energy uh -huh. but the deer looks good sure you know but if it gets shot with a rifle like maybe it gets a little bit more torn up but it's far less energy you know it's like a freight train sure yeah that is a great and underestimated hunting rifle i wouldn't have called that now granted i'm not a big hunter and i don't shoot a lot of 50 but um i maybe think this you should rethink that 
Look, maybe I will. Maybe I'll go smoke something with a 50 tonight. I don't know. We'll you've, see where the night takes me. You've got you know? plenty of time left to change your ways. Maybe yeah. that would get you out of your little express ticket to hell that you're on. Final thank you to FLP Firearms Legal Protection. They also sponsor the channel. My advice in life would be don't shoot people. It's mean and it's a bad thing to do. But if you happen to wind up in a legally justified shooting or self-defense scenario, a service like FLP would be a good thing to have. They have unlimited attorney fees. When you call the little hotline, you don't get a customer service rep. You actually get an attorney that you can ask stuff to. They've got crime, crime scene incident cleanup because, hey, someone got to pay up the guy that cleans it up, you know? So they got a few different plans, but the code is 1911. It saves you about a third off the service. Um, highly recommend you check that out. Good service, good people. Look it up.